Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen. I am Noreen, Noreen Smith, Product Development Creative Manager here at Creative Memories. And it is my pleasure to be with you each and every Wednesday on the Facebook Virtual Crop, Virtual Crop Facebook group and the YouTube channel. So welcome, welcome everybody. And I say that I'm with you every Wednesday, but last Wednesday I was sick. And it was one of those situations where I didn't have a lot of, uh, didn't have a lot of notice. It just kind of came out of the blue and I just could not be with you. So I'm very sorry about that, but I'm back and I'm excited to be with you today. And I'm seeing lots and lots of gals joining in with us. Uh, there, I know a few of you have already kind of scrolled up and out of my sight, but there's Judy, Joanne, uh, someone from Maine. Yeah, I missed being here last week and it was definitely one of those, you know, I was lying in bed thinking, oh, I wish I could be doing that instead of this. So I missed seeing you guys as well. And actually, uh, we were kind of talking and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-record some not generic, but I'm going to pre-record a couple of episodes that you could do, you know, with anything, maybe a tool focus or, you know, a layout idea from start to finish um, process, you know, that kind of thing, layout process that if I'm sick again, uh, that can be played in my absence. So again, my apologies, but thank you very much. I know a few, I saw a few comments saying, hope you're not sick, hope you're well. So thank you for thinking about me. Uh, I'm excited to be back. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and everybody's chiming in from all across the U.S., Canada. And I'm seeing some of my Australian friends as well. So welcome, everybody. It's getting warm here for sure. Uh, I'm seeing that there's still lots of snow and lots of winter weather in other places. Um, next week is my son's spring break. Both of my sons have spring break next week, the week after Easter. So I actually will be away, but there will be a pre-recorded video. We're going to head out and do some, um, you know, just a relaxation road trip sort of thing, uh, into B British Columbia. So I know that the weather will be much better there than it is here. So again, hoping that you are, uh, Hoping that you're doing well. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Hoping you guys are all doing well and that the weather is treating you good. So it is time, that time in the year, you know, especially in North America, to start thinking about your road trips, your, your camping trips, all of that kind of good stuff that's happening this summer. So we are going to set up camp today and we're going to create an easy uh, layout based on a border and kind of one of my favorite sort of, I won't call it a formula, but my favorite kind of go-to types of layouts. So we're going to play around with that. And of course, we're going to use the beautiful new Setup Camp collection that just launched a couple days ago. Been super popular, super well received. Uh, and I do want to tell you about one component of that particular uh, collection. So let's take a look at it here on my table. And then I'm just going to refer you to the website to answer a couple questions you might have about one of the components. All right. So let me see here. Where are we going? Let's go over to my table, first of all. And isn't it fun? Oh, my gosh. So I have to tell you that I am a huge Wes Anderson uh, fan. And if any of you have seen his uh, movie Moonrise Kingdom, you're going to recognize all of these kind of retro or vintage colors and icons and references. It's just so much fun. And it really is unlike many of the camping collections we've had before because of the inclusion of some of these colors, like the soft pink and the tangerine uh, in with the other colors. And I absolutely, I absolutely love this paper. I would have, you know, 20 of these sheets if I could. But there's so many great patterns in here. The campers, the trees, let me put this part down. Um, all of these fun little sort of retro camping badges. I love, love, love this little campground map. It reminds me of the little maps my parents used to pick up when we would drive into a campground or the national park. Love that. A really fun little sort of check or plaid. And then all of these great camping icons. 
And I love that our designers have put all of our hero papers on one side and then all of the fabulous tonals on the other side. And it makes it really easy to coordinate everything and choose which papers you want to work with. So I love these big patterns, but sometimes they're a little bit overwhelming. So that's what we're really going to focus on today. How we can use these, you know, feature these patterns um, with using the tonals. We're going to make an easy sort of formula layout with a fantastic border. And the border is going to be made with the new Comfortable Camper Border Punch. So let me just give you a little sneak peek of that because it is so, so much fun. I love how it's got the little retro shaped kind of bowler style vintage trailer all nestled amongst the trees and that is fantastic on its own but we're going to use those tonal papers to create a border that looks even more detailed with a bunch of very colorful campers nestled in not just one little stand of trees but a bunch so that's the border we're going to make and we're going to talk about how we can pair that with those beautiful patterned papers. But before we get into that, let's just talk really quickly about the rest of the uh, collection. Of course, stickers. And, you know, in my mind, patterned paper, stickers, no brainer. Every collection almost that comes out, that's what I go to for sure. I feel like I can get so many layouts and uh, borders and things like that done with just those two products. Of course, the embellishments are fantastic as well, but if I had to choose, I would always go for the stickers and the, the paper. And the reason I say that is because you've always got, well, I shouldn't say always, but 99% of the time you've got a set of three sheets one with fantastic icons. Look at that little uh, raccoon and the fox. Love it. And these, these really cute little round badges. Those are great. And then you've got a sheet full of titles and word art that you can add. And then you've got the sheet of borders. So you really have a real wide variety when you get the sticker pack. But having said that, of course, the setup camp is just so much fun with all of the embellishments. So we've got some fun enamels. You can see we've got the flamingo and the little raccoon there and some other things. And then all of the die cut embellishments, you're going to have a great time with them. So I have both because, you know, typically I do buy both. <laughs> but uh, if I had to, you know, just buy one or the other or you know a couple of things oh my gosh there's the raccoon again if i had to buy or limit my purchasing i would definitely buy the paper and the stickers look at these look at this fantastic frame i love that and then we've got some great um field notes look at that can you imagine yeah going out and just taking your little you know notes while you're out observing so much fun so this is going to be great for campers obviously but it's also going to be great we know that you've been waiting for something you can use with scouts, girl guides, girl scouts, boy scouts, um, you know, all, all those kinds of outdoor camp um, and outdoor, you know, related clubs. So that's the embellishment pack, super fun. And then the map pack is one of the cutest I've seen. I love these sort of scenic ones. And then there's little postcards. So those are always great as well. And then we can't forget about the beautiful mocha colored album with all of the trees. The trees kind of match the, the shape of the trees on the comfortable camper punch, border punch. And then I love these outline trees as well. So super fun. And again, love all of it. But we are going to really kind of focus mostly on the papers. Sorry, just getting things out of the way here. The papers and the stickers along with the comfortable camper. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned is the trail sign punch. And people were so excited about this that it did sell out very quickly. But the team has come together and they've made a great uh, adjustment. So I'm going to flip you over now to my computer screen. Let's talk really quickly. Again, just a reminder, I am in Canada. So that's why you see the little Canadian flag there. But you'll want to go to your website 
and the What's New section. And you'll see a notice that the trail sign punch, I'll just scroll down to just the trail sign here, you'll see that the trail sign punch is expected back in early, uh, summer 2023. So you're gonna be able to reserve yours and not miss out. Isn't that awesome? I'm so excited that we're gonna be able to accommodate. You can order yours, and I'm just gonna click through so that I can get the details right. You can order yours through, sorry, there, there we go, April 28th, all right? So you can either order just your trail sign punch or you can order it as part of the buy it all bundle. So we've made that available for you still and you can purchase either just the punch or the buy it all bundle and, and pay for your order and then when you receive your order, you're gonna basically get a little IOU style card that will have details about um, your, your purchase, your, your trail sign punch. So basically you are reserving yours and then you'll receive a little um, IOU style card which will give you more information. So you don't wanna miss out. This is our first attempt at pre-ordering. So in effect, you're reserving or pre-ordering your trail sign punch. So I'm so excited that we were able to accommodate because this was unexpectedly hot, 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 right off the mark. So that is good news indeed. But we're not gonna be playing with the trail sign punch today. As I said, we're gonna be playing with the comfortable camper punch. So let's go back to my table and let's do some punching and borders and all that fun stuff. So I mentioned that we are going to focus on using the tonal papers for the this border, this layered border. Uh, as I said, it's great on its own, but we're gonna do some layering with the tonal papers. And the reason we wanna do that is because this is that sort of go-to formula I was talking about. When you create a tonal border or a tonal embellishment or a tonal photo mat or anything like that, you can use it on pretty much any of the hero papers in the coordinating paper pack, okay? So I'm just gonna show you before we, we do it. Obviously the plain, this is just punched from hot fudge cardstock. Obviously that looks great but look at how fun it is when we have a border that features all of the colors. So there it is with the camper. There it is with the trees. There it is on the badges. It stands out quite a bit on there. Here it is with the map. I just love how it looks with that one. It looks great with the checked and of course with all of the the camping icons. So making making your borders, making your embellishment, punching from the tonals really, really helps you be able to use these beautiful patterns as your base pages, which is what I love to do. So we're gonna make the border. We're going to explore how we can add it to the, um, the base papers, the hero papers, and with a few little sort of tweaks with photo mats that are cut from the same same paper. So it's going to be really fast and easy. So we are going to take a few minutes to put together the border. And I'm going to start just by reminding you how to use the border punches. And I'm going to punch one border from this soft pink. So most of us are familiar with the border punches, but I did see a few comments earlier that this was the first time people have been joining us in the virtual crop group, first time they're joining us live, first time, you know, if this is the first um, collection that they purchased. So again, we know that there are people who are new to some of these tools. So let me take a minute and just show you. Now, first of all, your paper can be fed into the punch from either direction, okay? So whatever is most comfortable for you. I like to feed it in from this side and use my right hand to hold the paper in place. So once you feed it in, if you feed it in from this side, you're gonna to want to line up the edge with this line on the front of the punch. If you feed it in from this side, 
you'll want to line up the edge of the paper with this line, okay? And then the pictures that are on the base plate are really important. So let's go ahead and feed in our paper. I'm going to hold it there, but you can see that I've got it lined up with the line on the front of the punch. I'm just going to go ahead and punch, and then I'm going to start to move it. So you'll start to see the punched shape coming out, and you want to line up the punched shape with the printed picture on the base plate. So you don't have to try and sort of look up here. This is really just to show you what it's going to look like. You're trying to match down here. So if you're going that way, you're matching with this. If you're going this way, you're matching over here. So I'm going to make sure that all of the blue image is covered up. Line it up again. I'm holding it nice and firmly at the back lip of the punch. And then I can just punch again, move it along until my paper shape covers the shape on the base plate and then I can just keep going. And once you get used to it, it's really quick. It's really just the first couple of times that you, you know, use it or try this style of punch that you might be a little bit um, hesitant or it might take you a couple more minutes. So there it is. And I should mention that you can see that this is an edge style punch. So it leaves the paper or it leaves the punched area attached to the paper you're cutting it from. So for our punch here, I'm actually going to trim it down using our 12 inch trimmer. And I'm just going to trim this, oh, you know, about a, about a half an inch from the edge. So I'm trimming it about uh, one and a quarter inches all together. That will give me a nice amount of space to work with. Okay, so that's how to punch. Let's talk about assembling our border now. So I'm going to need this. I'm going to keep that off to the side because you can see I've got some pink borders or pink campers here. But I'm going to start with a, a border punched from this kind of dark teal starry background. And this is uh, cut at a total of two and a quarter. So let's, let me grab a little, should have had a sticky note. Let me just write that down. So two and a quarter inches for that one. And then I've got one punched from the brown wood grain. But here's the secret. I actually punched it on the reverse because when I start to assemble, I want my trees to be kind of offset. So I don't want my trees to all be exactly the same. So I know that I want my middle layer to be brown. So I flipped over the paper, punched it out, and then cut it down. And this one is two inches. Okay. And then I went ahead and did one more with the green and I just punched it with the green side up and I cut it down to one and three quarter inches. So those are my three pieces that I'm going to use for the base. And when you look at this, you can see that the, the trees are staggered. Let me put it down here. The trees are staggered and the trees in the background are the darkest and then the middle ones are the brown kind of an in-between tone and then the brightest at the front. So here's your little, your little um, art lesson for the day. When you have, when you look at things, the dark colors recede and appear to be further back. So that's why I use this dark teal for the kind of the base or the background. Then the, the brown is the middle ground and then the brighter green, because brighter and lighter colors appear to come forward, that's what I'm using for, for my foreground, for my front piece, okay? So that's what we're starting with. Then we're going to need a couple of pink campers, right? I've got two pink campers here, and I'm actually going to need another color, so I'm going to go back to the, the piece that I was cutting apart for this border, so I've got a couple of uh, orange campers that I can punch out there. And then you might notice that I've blocked out or backed the campers with some dark um, paper. So I've just got some hot fudge here. And I'm going to use my circle punch. 
just to cut a couple of circles from some hot fudge and we're going to need those as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble these now. You're going to need your micro tip scissors and we're going to cut away the campers from the background and the middle ground. So this is just going to take a second. We only need the trees in the background and we don't want necessarily to have all of our campers layered on top of each other. We want our campers to be in the foreground. So we'll just go ahead and snip away all of our campers from the background pieces. And you can save these for something else. You can do mini borders in this style with different color variations. But I do want to show you before I go much further here that one of the reasons I really like to use the tonals is because even though these patterns are gorgeous, look at the back side when we, when we have a really busy pattern that we punch out. So I really like reserving my busier patterns for larger blocks, for the base pages, all of that kind of stuff. Because sometimes when we cut it up or punch it, we lose some of the detail of the punch. You know, even when we have it on, you know, a darker sort of background, there's some hot fudge to back it with. We just don't see it in the same way because the pattern is what our eye sees instead of the shapes of the punch. So that's why I really like to use the pattern paper for my large blocks or for my base and then the more solid or tonal patterns for um, the punched shapes and especially when we're layering them together to create something like this layered border. And it's going to take just a couple of minutes to go through this but it's not difficult and it's a great kind of fun little activity to do. Okay so there's my trees in the background. Now remember I punched this middle ground on the wrong side. So I want my, um, my brown wood grain to show. So I punched it on the opposite side. And just even from these first couple of cuts, you're gonna see, see why in just a second. Let me get a couple of these campers out of the way. So now when I put this down, the trees are not gonna layer on top of each other. They're gonna kind of fill in the gaps. So we're going to have this beautiful tree forest, um, you know, stand of trees in behind our campers. And it's just going to look so much more full and interesting. And it's going to bring in a lot more of the colors. So I'm just doing this quite quickly and quite roughly. I might be missing some of the little details. But there's our stand of trees now, okay? Now, that, those are the only two borders that we need to cut the trees from. We're going to be layering this on top, okay? And we are gonna offset it just a bit uh, so that our bright green trees don't necessarily cover over our dark green trees. So we'll do that in a second. But first of all, we wanna back the, kind of cover up, like pull the blinds down on our uh, campers. So remember we punched a couple of circles. I'm just gonna really roughly and quickly cut them into quarters. And that's gonna give me a really easy way to kind of black out the doors and windows there of my camper. So I might just have to do a little bit of trimming and actually maybe what I'll do is just cut off the the tip of that quarter. So it's kind of like a, I don't know what that shape is. Do you know what that shape is? If you know the official name for that shape, let me know. So now I should be able to just cover up the door and the window of my campers quite quickly and easily. I told you, you know, name of our time together is fast and fun. So I try to be as quick as I can and I try to come up with ideas that are quick for you to do as well. 
So I'm just covering over all five of these. So that's why I needed the two uh, circles. So we're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit of one here. A little bit of repositionable adhesive. And there we go. I did a pretty good job. I'm just rubbing off any additional repositionable adhesive that is showing through the doors there. And I've got one little bit to trim. Oops, that took a little bit of a jump. Okay, so now we have our, our layers and we're ready to, to add them all together. So the first one, all we're gonna do is a little bit of repositionable adhesive just on the base. And we're going to set that, we're going to match the ends because that's going to be offset already. Isn't that pretty already? And if you missed out on, you know, any tree borders in the past, this is a great one because you can still really take advantage of the trees. Okay, now for this one, we're going to add our repositionable all over and we're going to slightly offset it. So I'm going to try and get the green, the bright green trees just in between the brown and the dark green trees. So you can see that I've left a little bit of the brown showing, a little bit of the green showing, and I've moved it along so one part is actually offset. Now, let's just go ahead and trim off the part that is offset and now we can come back and fill it in over on this side. I don't know if it's this, my Scots background or if it's just that I'm trying to find easy ways to make these things work without having a lot of pieces to do. But that little piece that was overhanging, I just trimmed off and now I've got it over on this side. And I can just clean up that whole little edge. Okay, so that's how I got the layered look. And I love that it looks like I've got all of these different colors of trees that you might see in the forest, the dark green, the brown, and the bright green. So now let's go over to our colored paper and we're gonna trim off again our cute little campers. Get a couple of pink ones from from the piece that we just trimmed together, or we just punched together. Microtip scissors are great for this. I was doing it earlier with my all-purpose, and they worked just fine, but the microtip were, are even better. All right, so maybe I'm gonna put those there. And then I mentioned that I had punched this one earlier so that I could use it on my sample, so I'm just gonna go ahead and punch the rest of well, I need two more orange ones. Okay. One more. And then remember how we um, reverse punched the brown? Well, that means that we actually have, now where did it go? Oh yeah, here's our little brown uh, trailers that we that we uh, cut off for our brown uh, for our brown tree layer in our forest. When you flip them over, they're exactly right to do here. So I'm just going to, because I've got some extras, I'm just going to go ahead and add those on, and I can always trim off the excess. Isn't that cute? So, I mean, you could, you know, if you have a trailer, you can sort of customize your trailer there. But now we have these multicolored vintage trailers in this little forest in the, you know, settled in the woods. And you can make your trailers any color you want. And they're going to match beautifully with our papers. All right, let's trim off our overhanging trailer here. And I think if we're lucky, that's just gonna fill in. Yeah, that's just gonna fill in this spot over here. So repositionable adhesive is going to work. Now, 
The only thing you might see is a little tiny seam there, but we can take one of those great word art, you know, wander maybe, something like that. And when we add that right over top there, we're never even going to see that little split. So isn't that cute? I feel like it's just so fun to play with and make all of these kind of combinations with these different colors. And again, it just doesn't have the same sort of look when you punch them from the, the you know, the busier patterns. But boy, oh boy, do you ever have fun creating a multicolored design with all of the tonals. Okay, so that's our border. How long did that take us? I had a couple of pieces pre-printed, but it took us about 10-15 minutes to put it together. So you could make two of those and then you could make, you know, put that across the bottom of a spread. And I see a comment there, you know, so cute. I think this can be used for hiking if you stay in a cabin. Exactly. You don't have to have a camper to use this scene. So, and you know, this idea again is nothing new. You can certainly create these layered style borders by punching multiples and cutting out uh, different pieces, um, you know, with other punches as well. Okay, so even though we've got two, I'm just gonna use one. But let's look, now that we've got this border, we can use it, as I said, on all six of our papers. So I've got some, four by six and four by four photo mats cut from the same uh, papers that I punched are three layers of trees. And this is what I mean about a super fast layout. So maybe, maybe I'm, and you can use obviously whatever colors you want, but maybe I've got three photos. I can put something together maybe like that really quick and easy. So that's why this is what I meant when I said this is not necessarily a formula, but it's my go-to when I've got some photos. I just want to have, you know, a little uh, excitement or a little bit of interest. The border does it. So playing around for 10 minutes to create a border, super fast compared to trying to find maybe a sketch or a layout example that or I have to sort of cut different paper pieces. So base page, pattern paper, base page, tonal border, tonal photo mats. And this one, of course, is my favorite with these campers, but it'll work just the same. Here's the trees. So here I would just kind of look at where I might want to place that. You could for sure place it up at the top as well. That's just as cute, just as fun. So now maybe I've got two, two different little four by fours. So I can just overlap and create a little bit of a, what I call those little intersections, right? So just a little bit of something different. I can put a title sticker in here. Let's see, could be something like, you know, weekend getaway. Uh, maybe I'm gonna put another or a six by four down here. And now all of a sudden I have a place for those cute little uh, field notes. Let me grab them. So I could put weekend getaway field notes and my layout's done. So again, pattern paper base, tonal border, tonal photo mats. So that's the trees. Let's do this one. This one is the, the most tonal of the, the pattern papers, but again, it might, you know, when you punch this from the, from the uh, camper, it's probably the one that would, that would be the best out of all of the, the busier patterns. Okay. So there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. And this one I'd use maybe the green. So again, just something a little bit different. Here's my little raccoon, wilderness society, or maybe the trailblazers, right? Because this sort of trailblazers really uh, works with that behind, or maybe this one is fun too. And it'll bring in all of the colors from my, from my border, okay? So another pattern paper base, tonal border, tonal mats. Let's do two more, three more really quickly. This is so much fun. I could see a two page layout with this. Oh, so cute. 
All right, so you could do something like this going across the middle. And then you're still going to have room for your photos above and below. And it still gives you the idea of the pattern at the back. So I might switch that around a little bit. Maybe I put it opposite colors, same size, opposite colors, something like that. Okay, or you can mix and match, or you could have all of your photo mats the same. It's totally up to you. But just repeating those photo mat colors with the papers that you used in your border, that's what gives it cohesiveness. That's what really ties it all together. And of course, you could use some of the orange or the pink as well. I just didn't punch any of that out. All right, so that's again, pattern paper base tonal border, tonal photo mats. Here's that fun check. So let's maybe do something like that. And you could even spread this over a couple of pages. Maybe you're going to cut it in half and have a two page spread. And this would be on the second page. I don't have another piece of the of the uh, same paper, but you get the idea. So you could cut your border in half and make it kind of the feature that goes across the middle of the page. And in that case, you might want to put, you know, your title up top there, some word art, maybe some of those. And, and you could definitely put it across a two page spread. Okay. So lots of different options here across the top, across the bottom. You can do all sorts of things. And again, when I'm wanting to do a fast layout, I really just play around with getting my photos arranged on the page, looking for those little intersections where I can add, you know, a little overlapping um, embellishments, right? And that's a quick formula for me, for sure. Okay, and then the last one was all of these fun icons. I, I love the little hatchet and the canoe. All right, so let's put it across the bottom again. This is so cute. And in this case, let's do that same sort of, let's do that same sort of uh, staggered sort of pattern. We'll use two. I should have, I should have cut out more, more pieces, but you get the idea. So we could again just do something really quick. And in that case, I might put the little um, you know, journal box, just tuck it underneath there so that I could do a little bit of journaling. My, you know, my little embellishments there, or maybe one in the middle, or maybe my title. Where's my stickers with my titles? Okay, so you know, what a view or something like that could go right in the middle. So top or middle or bottom, it doesn't really matter. It's all going to look great because you're using those patterns in the big spaces, the tonals for the border and your photo mats. And again, when you put your photos on top, that little bit of the tonal paper just peeking out is going to link the things together. So that's going to link it down to the border. So that's really, you know, my sort of, like I said, favorite go-to idea for using patterns that I really love, pattern paper that I really love. And sometimes I'll put it on top of, um, I'll cut a smaller square, like an 11 inch square and, you know, put it on top of a piece of cardstock just for a little bit of um, a frame effect. But how fast is that to just have pattern paper as your base couple of tonal photo mats and then using obviously those same tonal papers for your border. So I hope you get a chance to make that. And I, I saw a few people saying, oh, it makes me wish I was, you know, was, was a camper. As, as we said, you don't have to be, uh, you know, a camper to, to use this kind of collection. It's all about the outdoors. It could be your backyard. You know, I don't have a camper in my backyard, but I could have a fun time camping out in my backyard. So lots and lots of options there, lots and lots of fun. And I just, I think, I think that retro camper is just the cutest, the cutest little thing. So I hope that that's given you an idea. And again, maybe not even with set up camp, but with some of your other kind of 
busier or larger or statement or hero patterns that you have in your stash that you're just not sure how to use. Use them for the big blocks. Use them as, you know, cut it in half and use it as two six inch, you know, um, strips across a double page layout. Use it as big base pages, large shapes on base pages. And then focus on punching and cutting from the tonal papers that coordinate or cardstock that coordinates and you'll find that everything comes together. But the key is, is that there's all six, is there all six? I think there's five. Sorry, I'm fibbing. There's five. Oh no, because we actually had that, that background there. So there's six different tonal patterns, tonal colors in the border. So that's why it coordinates back to every other pattern paper. Uh, again, where did I put my, you know, the, the border itself punched out of cardstock is super cute, but you can just do so much more and you can just really make all of the colors in the collection in those big patterns really sing. Somebody's saying they're going to use it for grandson Boy Scout photos for sure. Yes, I agree. Both my sons were in beavers and scouts when they were younger. Uh, my older son is a cadet now, an army cadet, so he goes on a lot of those, you know, uh, FTX style campouts. So I've got lots of pictures that I can use with this as well. We currently don't have a trailer, but we had a trailer for quite a few years. And of course, we had a cabin for many years. So I've got lots and lots of photos that I'm going to be able to use with this collection. So make sure you grab the buy it all bundle. Okay, and just remember, read through the, the print on your website, uh, creativememories.com, creativememories.com uh, slash au, or creativememories.ca, and just remind yourself how the trail signs punch is going to work. You're going to pre-order it. You're going to reserve yours, and then uh, those are available to order until April 28th, and then they are, are, uh, we're expecting them later in the summer. Okay, so you'll receive a little card and information about how to redeem uh, that or how you'll get your trail sign punch when it arrives. Okay, love it, love it. Very cute border. Oh, great, thanks. Can't wait to get for my order to get here so I can play with all this fun stuff. Perfect for trips this summer in our camper. I agree. I agree fully. So as I mentioned, speaking of trips, I am off on a little bit of a trip next week for a few days, so I won't be here with you next Wednesday, but I will be recording, or I have recorded, uh, a video for you, and we're going to play with the uh, Congrats Grad Collection. We're going to talk about all of the ways that you can celebrate your graduate that you have, maybe it's a graduating, uh, you know, senior. Uh, my older son is in grade 12, so he is graduating this year, so that's exciting. But you might also be going back through your own photos or uh, photos of your, your kids. Maybe they're older. Maybe they already have graduated. We're going to talk about some great ways that you can uh, you know, preserve those photos as well as some great gifts ideas for the graduate. Plus, we're going to do a fun pen technique. So I was so excited about the silver and gold metallic dot tip pens. So make sure you grab those so we can have some fun playing with those dot tip pens. Okay. Awesome. Oh yes. And happy Easter. Blessed Easter to everybody as well. Of course, Easter Sunday is coming up. And so that's part of the reason we're going to be away on a break. So for those of you who celebrate Easter, have a wonderful one. All right. Okay. So I will see you on with the pre-recorded video next week, and then I'll be back live the following week. All right. Thanks very much for joining me today, everybody. Take care and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.